أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار It is reported in Sahih al-Bukhari that our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that on يوم القيامة when Allah عز وجل has decreed that all of the people of Jannah will have entered into Jannah and all of the people of the Hellfire will have entered into the Hellfire Allah عز وجل will order that death should be brought forth in between the two, between paradise and hellfire. And it will be brought forth in the shape of a ram, in the form of a ram. And then a caller will call out and he will say to the people of Jannah, Ya Ahlal Jannah Hal Ta'rifuna Hadha. O people of Jannah, do you know what this is? Fayashra'ibbuna wa yanduruna wa yaqulun, Na'am hadha al mawt. They will look at this ram and they will see it. And they will recognize it for what it is. And they will say, yes, we know what it is, it is death. And then that same caller will call out and he will say, Ya Ahl al-Nar, hal ta'rifuna hadha? O people of the fire, do you know what this is? فَيَشْرَئِبُونَ وَيَنْظُرُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ نَعَمْ هَذَا الْمَوْتِ They too will stop and they will look at this ram and they will recognize it for what it is. And they will say, yes, it is death. فَيُؤْمَرُ بِهِ فَيُذْبَحْ Then Allah will order that it be slaughtered. And so that ram that signifies death will be slaughtered. And then it will be said, يَا أَهْلَ الْجَنَّةِ خُلُودٌ فَلَا مَوْتِ وَيَا أَهْلَ النَّارِ خُلُودٌ فَلَا مَوْتِ O people of Jannah, there is for you eternity and no death. And O people of the fire, there is for you eternity and no death. This hadith of our Prophet ﷺ, وسلم, shows us the significance of that day. And it brings to our attention that Yawm Al-Qiyamah is not just any day. It's not just a, a phase that you'll pass through, or a stage that you'll go through, and there will be no ramifications to it. Allah Azza wa Jal in the Qur'an gives Yawm Al-Qiyamah many, many names. And it's one of those names that I want to focus upon today. And that name that Allah gives in the Qur'an to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, one of its names is Yawm Al-Hasra. The day of regret. Often in our lives we have regrets and remorses. There's not a single person sitting here. Doesn't matter how old, how young, how rich, how poor, how educated or uneducated, male or female. Everyone has remorses and regrets. Remorses and regrets for things that you've done in the past or opportunities that you've missed. Perhaps the course that you took at university, the car or the house that you brought, or perhaps even the way that you've treated those people around you. We have regrets and remorses. Not a single person except that he has some of those regrets sitting here right now. But in the dunya, we're able to overcome those regrets to one extent or another. If you did something to someone, you can go back and apologize to them. You can make it right. Even if that person has passed away, you can give charity on their behalf. If it's a close loved one that's passed away, you can go and make hajj on their behalf. There are things that you can do. And at the very least, you can return to Allah and make tawbah. There are ways to overcome these type of regrets and remorses. But Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran, when He calls Yawmul Qiyamah Yawmul Hasra, the day of regret, the day of remorse, is because that remorse and that regret on Yawmul Qiyamah is far different to anything that you feel in this life. There is no way for you to overcome that regret on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. 
those missed opportunities, those things that you shouldn't have done that you did, or that you should have done that you didn't do. There is no way to overcome that on Yawmul Qiyamah. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And warn them of the day of regret, when the people will be in a state of heedlessness, forgetfulness, negligence, and they will be, and the order of Allah will have been established, and they were not believers. That is the true day of regret. If on that day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah you realize that you didn't achieve the pleasure of Allah, you didn't achieve the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah, you didn't achieve Jannah through your actions and your deeds, and you realize on that day that instead you incurred the wrath of Allah and the anger of Allah and the curse of Allah and that your abode will be the hellfire. That is the true regret. And when we look in the Quran and we look in the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the regrets that people will face on Yawm Al-Qiyamah are mentioned and they're highlighted in different ways and different forms. And it is those regrets that I want to focus on today. Because it is from the traps of shaitan. And what shaitan does to deceive us and lull us into this false sense of security. That we're often preoccupied with the dunya. And we're worried about the regrets that we have. And perhaps some of them are serious in the dunya as well. But we often forget the bigger picture. We often lose perspective and focus of what really matters. And that is the regrets that you will face on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. All of us, alhamdulillah, still have the opportunity to put right those regrets before we face them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So how are they mentioned in the Qur'an and the Sunnah? It is mentioned in a number of contexts. One of them is the regrets that a person will face for not having obeyed Allah Azza wa Jal, for not having worshipped Allah, for not having come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal through the good deeds that they should have performed. On that day, people will regret the opportunities that they wasted. Where instead of coming to the masjid, for example, and praying and worshipping Allah, or attending a conference or a program, they wasted their time sitting at home in front of a TV. Or they went and they did something else that didn't bring them any benefit. That is a regret that people will have on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Zumr in the Quran, that people will face this regret on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and they will say, أن تقول نفس يا حسرة على ما فرطت في جنب الله وإن كنت لمن الساخرين. That some people will say on that day, woe to us, how we were neglectful of worshiping Allah. Woe to us, how we were neglectful of worshiping Allah, and instead we would mock others. أو تقول لو أن الله هداني لكنت من المتقين. And some people will show remorse and they will say, if only Allah had guided us. We would have been from the pious. أو تقول حين ترى العذاب لو أن لي كرة فأكون من المحسنين. Or they will say, showing regret and remorse when they see the punishment of Allah, that if only we had the ability to go back to the dunya and we would be from the good doers. On that day, that regret will have no benefit. That remorse that a person shows will have no benefit. Now is the time for that action, not on Yom Al Qiyamah. It will be too late by then. The Prophet ﷺ passed by a grave with a number of his companions. And he said to those companions, who is the companion of this grave? Who is the person in this grave? So they mentioned it to him. They mentioned to him the person that was buried there. So the Prophet ﷺ said, by Allah, for him to come back to the dunya and just pray two rak'ahs is more beloved than everything else that is contained herein. Everything in the dunya, all of its beauty, all of its wealth, all of its beautifications, everything that we have, its adornments, all of them, to pray to rak'ahs is more beloved to him than to receive all of that. But then it will be too late. That person won't be able to come back. They won't be able to come and even say a single statement, let alone pray, pray to rak'ahs. But that is the regret and remorse that a person will feel on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And from the regret and the remorses that are mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah, that a person will feel on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, is that a person does good deeds, and perhaps they worship Allah, or they do righteous deeds, but then because of their own actions, those deeds are nullified and they become void. 
a person does a good deed. But because within the deed they're showing off, are not really sincere in their worship to Allah, that deed is nullified and void. Perhaps a person does a good deed, but because of the arrogance and the pride that they display within that deed, it is rendered null and void. Perhaps another person does a favor to someone, gives them some money, gives them some charity, but then because of the way they treat that individual, Allah takes away all of the reward of that good deed. That will be a, a means of remorse. Because it's not just about performing good deeds, but it is about pres preserving those good deeds as well on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, وَبَدَا لَهُمْ سَيِّئَاتُ مَا كَسَبُوا وَحَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ On the day of judgment, it will become clear for them the evil of that which they used to earn. It will become clear for them the evil of that which they used to do. And so from the traps of shaitan, is that even when a person performs a good deed, they worship Allah, they try to come closer to Allah, he tries to nullify that deed. And that's why the Prophet wasallam said about the prayer that perhaps a person will pray and they will only receive half of their prayer in reward. Meaning because it was only half that they were attentive in. In the other half, perhaps they were showing off. Perhaps they were absent-minded. Perhaps they were heedless in their prayer. And so that prayer doesn't benefit them. They don't receive the rewards and the fruits of that prayer. And they won't receive the reward of it on Yawm Al-Qiyamah either. That is the regret and remorse that people will have on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. From the regrets and remorses that people will have is how they were neglected their family in terms of the rights and responsibilities that were due upon them. The regrets that they will have for their children that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, if they didn't give them the righteous tarbiyah, they didn't teach them in the proper way about their religion, they become misguided. And some of that onus and responsibility will fall upon the parents, the mother and father for being neglectful in their duties. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَلَا ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ Say to them that on that day there will be losers on the day of judgment. Those who will lose themselves and they will lose their families. Indeed, that is the greatest type of loss. That will be a source of regret and remorse. Because on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, even the people who are closest to you, your own parents, your own spouses, your own children, the people who in this dunya would sacrifice life and limb and wealth for your sake. On Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they will become your enemies as well. They too will want to exact revenge from you. They too will want to only save their own skins. Won't care about that relationship that they had with you. Doesn't bother them how close you were to them, how much good you may have done, unless they had Iman and Taqwa. Rather, they will want to come and free themselves from you. And so on that day, a person will regret being placed in that situation that their own family members, the people closest to them, will turn to be their own enemies. They will be the ones who will demand revenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will want your good deeds, and they will want you to take their evil deeds. That will be a source of great regret on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. From the sources of regret and remorse on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, is that a person in this life surrounds themselves with bad companionship. Friends who shouldn't really be kept close to you. People who don't have a positive influence over you. They don't bring you back to Allah. Don't remind you about Allah. Don't bring you closer to Allah. A person on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they will have regret because of the companionship that they kept. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran in Surah Al-Furqan, وَيَوْمَ يَعَدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا on that day on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when a person will chew and bite down on their own hands, and they will say, woe to me, if only I had taken the path of the messenger. Ya waylata, laytani lam attakhid fulan and khalila. Woe to me, if only I hadn't taken so-and-so as my close friend. Laqad adallani an dhikri ba'da idh ja'ani. Indeed, he misguided me after the remembrance of Allah came to me. That will be a source of regret. And that's something to ponder over now. The companionship that you keep, the acquaintances that you have, those people that are close to you, that you surround yourselves with. Do they bring you closer to Allah or do they drive you further away from Allah? 
And if it is the latter and not the former, then that will become a source of regret for you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٌ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ The closest of friends on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, they will turn into enemies one to another, except for the people of taqwa, except for the pious, those people who in this dunya would remind one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need companions and friends in the dunya, who when there's a conference going on, or there's a lecture or something that will boost your iman, they will encourage you to attend. You need friends in this dunya who will come and they will bring you to the masjid, who will remind you of Allah, who when you're going through difficult times, they will bring you closer to Allah. Those are the types of friendships that you need, and those are the types of friendships that will last even on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. From the sources of regret on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, is that a person doesn't study their religion, doesn't know anything about what they're doing, but instead they're blind followers. They follow anyone and everyone that screams and shouts the loudest. They don't know themselves, they have no foundation. No, they don't know the basics of their religion. Don't know the halal from the haram. Don't know what is sunnah from what is bid'ah. Rather they just follow whoever just comes along. That will be a source of regret on Yawm Al-Qiyamah if those people that you follow lead you away from the path of Allah. They misguide you, but only on Yawm Al-Qiyamah do you notice their misguidance. That will be a source of regret. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, وَلَوْ يَرَى الظَّلَمُ إِذْ يَرَوْنَ الْعَذَابِ أَنَّ الْقُوَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعَذَابِ Those people who oppress themselves, they will see on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. They will see that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who has all power when they see his punishment. And they will realize that Allah is severe in his torment. إِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَرَأَوُوا الْعَذَابِ وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ When those people who used to follow will be freed of from those that they would follow. The people that they would follow, they will free themselves from their own followers. And then they will be taken to the punishment of Allah and all means will be cut off from them. They won't have any chance, any recompense, any source or recourse to go back to Allah. They won't have any excuse in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. But because of that, they will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so therefore, every single person on Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be their own lawyer. They will have to speak in front of Allah and justify their own actions. It won't be sufficient for a person to say that I just followed so and so without really knowing myself. I didn't bother to research, didn't know what you wanted from me, O oh Allah. Rather, I just followed so and so and so and so. That was sufficient for me. Allah revealed the Quran and He gave us the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to each and every single one of us. Not just to the elite, not just to the scholars, not just to the people of knowledge, to every single person sitting here. And so therefore it is also the responsibility of every single person to learn as much as they can about that Quran and Sunnah. From the sources of regret and remorse on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, is that a person on that day will have regret and remorse for not following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for worshipping Allah in a way other than that which was dictated and ordained by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for committing innovations and so on and so forth. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا In Surah Al-Kahf, say shall we not inform you of the people who will suffer the greatest of loss on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَحْسِنُونَ سُنْعَا Those who were misguided from the path in the dunya, but they thought to themselves that all they were doing was good. That is the greatest form of loss, that a person spends 20, 30, 40, 50 years in the dunya worshipping Allah, thinking that they're coming close to Allah, thinking that they're following the Qur'an and the sunnah, but because of their ignorance, because of their lack of knowledge, because they followed those people that they shouldn't have been following, they will realize on Yawm Al-Qiyamah that Allah will render it all null and void. No benefit, no reward. And all of it, even though they thought that they were doing good, all of it will be taken away from them. Those people will experience a great loss. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ informed us that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when those people come towards his pond, his hawd on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, those people from this ummah who changed this religion, 
change the rulings of this religion, they will be dragged away and taken away by the angels. And the Prophet ﷺ, after trying to defend them, once he learns the sins that they committed and the errors that they made, that he himself ﷺ, will free himself from them. And he will say, take them away from me, those people who changed my religion after, after I came. And so that will also be a source of great remorse and regret on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the regrets and remorses that we have in this dunya are only a small part of what we will feel on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he has already outlined all of this for us in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so that we can rectify ourselves. So we can know where we're falling short and we know what we need to do in order to fulfill those shortcomings. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم جميع المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وإخوانه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد The greatest remorse that a person will feel on يوم القيامة are those people who will enter into the hellfire for eternity and they will see that death has been sacrificed in front of them so that there is no hope for them that they can escape from the punishment and the torment of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a discourse that will take place between the people of Jannah once they have entered into Jannah, and the people of the fire once they have entered into the fire. And that is that the people of Jannah will call out to the people of the fire and they will say, as Allah mentions in Surah Al-A'raf, أَنْ قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقًّا فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقًّا That we have found in Jannah the promise of Allah to be true. That which Allah promised us for following His religion, for having Tawheed in Him, for following the way of the Prophet wasallam, for believing and trusting and hoping in Him. We have found all of the promises that Allah made to us, they have come true in Jannah. فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقًّا So have you too, have you also found that the promises that Allah made to you have also come true? And they will say, نَعَمْ قَالُوا نَعَمْ They will say, yes. فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ اللَّعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ So a caller will call out between them that the curse of Allah is upon the oppressors. That will be a source of great remorse and regret. When people realize those people who perhaps in the dunya thought that there is no such thing as Yawm Al-Qiyamah, those people who perhaps in the dunya didn't even believe in a God, those people who perhaps in the dunya chose a path other than the path of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where they enter how fire for eternity that remorse will come to them and that reality will dawn upon them that they are here in the how fire for all of eternity. And then to expand upon their regret and remorse and to compound it. Allah Azza wa Jal also mentions that every time they seek some type of solace, some type of, 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 of retreat from the punishment of Allah, it will be denied to them. And so the people of the Hawfire will call out to the people of Jannah and they will say, Give us something from the water that Allah has provided for you or something else that Allah has given to you. Give us something from it. And the people of Jannah will reply, Inna Allah harramahuma ala al-kafirin. Indeed, Allah has made it haram upon the disbelievers. So even that type of recourse, that type of retreat from the punishment of Allah, it will not be given to them. And then Allah will further compound their remorse and their regret. And he will make it even worse when they will want once they know that they can have nothing from the, from the, from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will seek themselves that Allah should destroy them. They themselves will want demise and destruction. And so they will call out to Malik, who is the gatekeeper of the Hawfire. 
And they will say, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكْ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكْ O Malik, let your Lord destroy us. Let, us, let him just destroy us so that, so that we don't have to face this punishment. And he will reply and he will say, قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ Rather, you will remain here for eternity. And then to even increase further again, the remorse and the regret that those people will feel, they will try as their last recourse to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After all of the different intermediaries and all of the different intercessors have closed the doors in their faces, they will turn back to Allah and they will call on Allah and they will say, رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْهَا فَإِنْ عُدْنَا فَإِنَّا ظَالِمُونَ or our Lord, take us out from this fire, return us to the dunya, and then if again we deserve to be entered into the fire, then surely we will be oppressors. They will seek another chance, a second chance. Let us go back to the dunya of Allah and show you what we can do, how we can be righteous, how we can worship you, how we will have taqwa and iman in you. But Allah Azza wa Jal will reply to them and He will say, You will remain therein in a humiliated way and never again speak. And so every single door will be closed to them. And it will not be, be made prohibited for them to speak again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that will be the greatest of remorses on Yawm al Qiyamah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal has given everyone the opportunity that we should go back, that we should act in this dunya before we come to that stage where we may experience some of those regrets and remorses. When one of us does something here in this life, whether it is to someone else that we love, someone close to us, we make a decision that we regret. We do everything within our power to right that wrong so that we don't feel that sense of regret and remorse. And often we say that if we could turn back the clock and go back in time, we would change the decisions that we would make. Allah Azza wa Jal has already given us a glimpse of the future. He has given us some of the knowledge of the unseen, some of the events that will occur on Yawm Al Qiyamah, so that it is an opportunity for us to act in this dunya before we even reach that stage. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His most beautiful names and His most lofty attributes that He gives us all the ability to act in ways that please Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah azza wa jal grants us His pleasure and His forgiveness and mercy on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and that He doesn't make us from amongst those people who will experience regret and remorse on that day. ثُمَّ عَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَمَرَكُمْ بِأَمْنٍ بَدَأَ فِيهِ بِنَفْسِهِ وَثَنَّا فِيهِ بِمَلَائِكَتِهِ الْمُسَبِّحَةِ بِقُدْسِهِ وَيَّهَ بِكُمْ أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ مِن جِنِّهِ وَإِنْسِهِ فَقَالَ قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللَّهُمَّ صَلِّ وَسَلِّمْ وَزِدْ وَأَنْعِمْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى عَبْدِكَ وَرَسُولِكَ مُحَمَّدٍ وَارْضَ اللَّهُمْ عَنِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ لِأَمَّةِ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ أَبِي بَكْرٍ وَعُمَرَ وَعُثْمَانَ وَعَلِي وَعَنْ سَائِرِ الصَّحَابَةِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَالتَّابِعِينَ وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ وَعَنَّا مَعَهُمْ بِجُودِكَ وَكَرَمِكَ يَا أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ الْأَحْيَاءِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْأَمْوَاتِ اللَّهُمَّ آتِ نُفُوسَنَا تَقْوَاهَا وَزَكِّهَا أَنْتَ خَيْرُ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا أَنْتَ وَلِيُّهَا وَمَوْلَاهَا اللَّهُمَّ آتِ نُفُوسَنَا تَقْوَاهَا وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله 
يا للصلاة يا للفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استووا استووا اعتدلوا واقيموا صفوفكم وصدوا الخلل straighten your rows make sure that the rows in front of you are complete الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والشمس وضحاها والقمر إذا تلاها والنهار إذا جلاها والليل إذا يغشاها والسماء وما بناها والأرض وما طحاها ونفس وما سواها فألهمها فجورها وتقواها قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها كذبت ثمود بطغواها إذ بعث أشقاها فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله وسقياها فكذبوه فعقروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخاف عقباها الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وما خلق الذكر والأنثى إن سعيكم لشتى فأما من عطى واتقى وصدق بالحسنى فسنيسره لليسرى وأما من بقل واستغنى وكذب بالحسنى فسنيسره للعسرى وما يغني عنه ماله إذا تردى إن علينا للهدى وإن لنا للآخرة والأولى فأنذرتكم نارا تلظى لا يصلاها إلا الأشقى الذي كذب وتولى وسيجنبها الأتقى الذي يؤتي ما له يتزكى وما لأحد عنده من نعمة تجزى إلا ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى ولسوف يرضى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم